Hi everyone and welcome to my vlog about the United States healthcare system. Um, bear with me because I'm trying really hard to read this and also be looking at my camera. So um, first off, after reading through this week's text chapters and handouts and watching all of those videos, one thing that seems certain is that the US healthcare system has come a long way since it started. Healthcare reform, such as the Social Security Act of 1965 and the passing of the Affordable Care Act in 2010, seem to um, really uh, move the system along and improving the current system. It seems everyone wants affordable, quality health care, but it is a difficult task on how to figure out um, making that process happen. Currently, I think it's great that we have Medicare Part A, B, and C to help pay for health care costs and Part D to pay for medications for those who are 65 and older or those who are disabled. I think Medicaid is great for low-income families to have health insurance. For me personally, a long time ago, I found myself needing Medicaid and I was thankful that those services were available to me um, and because of that I was able to receive quality prenatal care during my first pregnancy. Um, even after that, for the first few years of my son's life then at that time, he was eligible to receive health care through Medicaid. Um, had those services not been offered to me, I'm not sure how um, I would have ever been able to pay for all of his well visits and his immunizations. Um, Currently, that son is now in the United States Army, and thankfully, he has health insurance now paid for by the federal government through the VA. Um, as far as organization of it, as far as I got from it, patient sees doctor, doctor provides goods or services, then the health insurance turns around, pays the doctor for the goods and the services he provided. That patient may or may not have a copay. Uh, this is sort of a clear cut and dry take on it, and it seems pretty organized when I put it that way. Um, upon further inspection, though, it's not so clear cut, and it seems a bit disorganized. <clears throat> also worth mentioning, um, a problem is the 47 to 60 million people in the U.S. who are currently going without health care insurance. <clears throat> a few problems that stood out to me while going through this week's materials was, one, the conflict between the federal and the state government. If the federal level makes health care reform or changes, but those changes can be accepted or denied at the state level, how do we as a country as a whole ever make progress? I feel like the drug makers and the pharmacies are also a huge issue. Obviously, their goal is to make money. Um, they're going to push for more expensive drugs to be sold, even though the old one that was on the market is just, if not more effective than the new one, um, and the old one is cheaper. Um, number three, and relatable to number two, is the donut hole. From my understanding, the ACA, um, the Affordable Care Act, closes the donut hole so Medicare recipients don't have to pay full price for drug prescriptions. That's great, and I think currently in 2020, I read that they're currently paying 25% of um, their medication costs of the prescription. Um, but what confused me mostly about this is that uh, Medicare for A, B, and C can negotiate health care costs, but for Part D, the federal government is not allowed to bargain for the prices of the medications. I think that seems a little disorganized and strange. Um, as for the current trends in the organization of the healthcare system, such as the patient-centered medical homes, um, also known as the PCMH, which supports primary care physicians being in charge of coordinating patient care, and the accountable care organizations, also known as the ACOs, which is a group of providers who collaborate to manage and coordinate care for a group of patients, seems like another step in the right direction, and also a step away from the fee for services. The PCMH reminds me of the organization of services of the National Health Service model in the United Kingdom, where care goes from the primary level to the secondary level and to the tertiary level, with the primary care physician at the beginning coordinating the next level of care if needed for that patient. 
these types of organizations, if utilized by the people in the United States, would have a great potential to impact cost and economic factors that are currently impacting our health care policy. Um, as our text states, the organizational task facing all healthcare systems is one of assuring that the right patient receives the right service at the right time and at the right place. Finally, if I was in charge of the health and human services, which I hope I never am, but if I was, uh, my first plan of action would be to organize healthcare in a manner that is not only available to all, but it would also be affordable and of equal quality regardless of your income. Uh, next, I would like to put in place incentives for people, like they have incentives for health um, care workers. Um, I would like to have incentives for all people to seek preventative care maintenance and to find a way to promote good health across all communities. Thank you for watching my vlog.